Hello everyone, greetings from the 7th of Nero, AJ here, and welcome to a video covering the lesser known lore of individual characters in the War Machine and Horde setting. Though, of course, there will be some of you who already know all of this. This one will concern Makeda of House Balash, Supreme Arch Dominator of the Scorn Empire, Commander in Chief of its military forces, and one of the biggest thorns in the side of every major power in the western half of the continent before the arrival of the Infernals, with the possible exception of Crix. What is going to be covered herein is Makeda's life before her representation in the tabletop game as Archdomina Makeda, also known as P. Makeda to stalwarts of the game, or Makeda 1, thanks to the preponderance of multi-incarnation characters in the setting now. This period was the subject of the Warlock Saga novella Instruments of War by Larry Correa, which is well worth reading along with bits and pieces of from other sources, of which the Gavin Carl files in particular are well worth studying, so um, massive spoiler alert. There won't be much by way of art, um, unfortunately, because aside from the main character herself and two others who play only very minor roles in this part of Makeda's history, of whom one is actually more speculative than anything else, um, no art exists that I'm aware of for the other named characters. Which is a pity, but then um, that's what one's imagination is for. For newcomers to the setting and to the Scorn faction in general, um, Makeda is in effect the overall leader of the Scorn faction in Hordes and one of the relatively few faction leaders in the whole game who is playable and takes an active part in the dirty work that their faction inflicts on others. And unless Scorn politics suffers great upheaval, Makeda is there to stay, despite the schemes of certain others. Perhaps predestined to greatness, it was not always the case for Makeda of House Balash. As a scion of already one of the most powerful houses of the Scorn realms, she was born with and grew up with the expectation that she would hold no small power. But as a second born of her father, the then Dominar Telkesh, son of Arch Dominar Vaktash, rule was bound for her older brother Akkad, who was half a generation her senior, and already a very capable warrior when she started the formal training as befit a child of such a noble family. In the Scorn world, the name Vark Tush was known almost universally and it was spoken with respect and reverence or seething hatred, with little to separate them. Under his rule, House Balash grew to what we know of it now as one of the foremost houses within the Scorn realms. His great conquests were matched only by his temper, but he was wise enough to channel it to productive endeavours, never letting his anger get the better of him whenever it mattered. Whatever other Scorn might say about Vaktash, they could not deny that he was among their kind's greatest heroes, for the mere sight of him in his cataract Katrati panoply would be greeted with awe and inspire unshakable confidence among allies and retainers, even into his later years. Among this paragon's retainers was a Praetorian swordsman, Zabalam, who, from the moment she was strong enough to hold a practice sword in each hand, taught the young Makeda in the style of his caste. Two swords wielded in unison, alternating each as protector and killer. This was not so much of a surprise as few would consider the young girl suitable for cataphract training as was given to her much more physically imposing brother. To claim it as inferior, however, is something entirely different. Nevertheless, as Makeda grew up and settled into a role as a junior commander in her father's army, Zabalam would be an emollient presence, a reassuring one that would be a source of unfiltered and unhoneyed advice. Makeda would trust him many times because of his experience and the respect she held him in, and this was in spite of their difference in station. He, as a mere Praetorian who never rose above the rank of Primus, next to her who would one day be a domina at the very least. Another tutor was the aged extola, Aptimus Haradum, a flighty individual who cared more for her research than anything else, but who inspired Makeda to study the intricacies and intimacies of mortithurgy with an earnest and diligent enthusiasm. While somewhat eccentric and occasionally a few hairs short of utterly crazed, Haradum was a loyal servant, her cryptic nature a source of comfort to her mistress, not least because she was often the only one Makeda trusted to speak with the soul of her grandfather Vakatash and pass on his words and the wisdom contained therein. The old arch Domina himself was as much a tutor to young Makeda as any of her actual ones, if more in an abstract way. In him she saw all that was good in a scorn, and while his latter years were filled less with battle and conquest and more introspection, 
It was in this time that he imparted much of the wisdom acquired throughout his long life to his granddaughter, whether it was advising her how to study and what to take from said studies, or the nature of the scorn being itself. Inevitably, though, Vagtash was the first of Makeda's most valued teachers to die, though he would live on close by in the sacred weapons. The swords of Balash, into which slivers of the old arch domino sacral stones were embossed. During her life there were many defining events, but one brief period in particular stands out as indicative of Makeda's future outlook and a demonstration of her gall and skill at arms, whether as a swordsman or as a commander. Such is this part of her life and the importance it had on Makeda herself, House Balash, and the Scorn Empire that it has been recounted so often that on occasion inaccurate accounts have been published in the West. Due to the conquests of her grandfather, House Muzkar held a long vendetta against House Balash, and shortly after Vaktash's passing and the appropriate exaltation of his soul, House Muzkar, under their tyrant, Naram, declared war. Rule of House Balash had passed to Telkesh, though mistaken histories posit that Telkesh did not rule at all and that his death meant that Vaktash was succeeded by Akkad directly. Telkesh did rule as Archdomino, but it is to the regret of House Balash that his rule was all too brief, and cut short by the greatest of indignities to barely a year. Nonetheless, at this time, while he bore the Archdomino's mantle against the incursion of from House Muscar, he duly led the cohorts of House Balash into battle, aided by his children, the now Dominar Akkad accompanying him with the main army while handing command of a flanking detachment to Makeda. Unknown to the young tyrant, her brother had already forsaken her and allowed false intelligence to render her orders untenable. Ordered to defend a hillock from what was expected to be a detachment of similar strength, she was, instead, confronted by the main balance of House Muscar's forces, led by a tyrant Naram in person. Under her command were Praetorians and Venators with a pair of Cyclopes. Thus was she thoroughly outnumbered and outpowered both, by an enemy that deployed more than a handful of formidable titans amongst its many beasts, while she had none of her house's elite cataphracts to even the odds, even by a fraction. Makedo exhorted her small command to great feats of arms, still believing that her brother would reinforce her as was the intention, and in so doing, she engaged Tarant Naram in single combat and displayed her tremendous personal mortithurgy for the first time the culmination of her studies and her innate prodigious talents. Tapping into the boundary between life and death, a concept that is fundamental to the scorn way of being and their spiritual beliefs, she held the souls of her slain warriors to their flesh and imbued renewed strength to them to continue fighting for one last effort. This, coupled with personally slaying tyrant Naran, undid the warriors of Muscar, who surrendered the field to her meagre remaining forces, but seeing her adversary die with honour, she commanded extollers of the defeated to preserve his soul. Unfortunately, Makeda would not claim a complete victory as she had not the warriors to compel a full capitulation from Naram's successor, so had capacity only to collect trophies from a field rather than subjugation of a conquered enemy and a body of slaves and spoils to match. Though this initial glory was denied her, she at least expected the warm welcome of the commanders of the main army when she rejoined them. What greeted her in place of that, though, was the news of her father's sudden and suspiciously inexplicable death and the elevation of her card to arch domino. The depth of Makeda's brother's dishonour was known when she realised that not only did he fail to reinforce her beleaguered cohort at the height of battle, as had been previously planned, but he had arranged the poisoning of their own father, Telkesh. But what enraged Makeda most was that arch domino Telkesh had been denied the ministration of House Balash's extollers and his soul was consigned to the void. Makeda would never forgive this insult, even, or perhaps especially, against her own brother. Her suspicions were all but confirmed when Akkad sent blood-runner assassins against her that very night while she tried to make sense of the day's events. She narrowly escaped her would-be killers at great cost, near death when she was finally safe, and Zabalam having sacrificed himself to buy time for her to make good her flight, though Haradum had the fortune and presence of mind to preserve his soul for a worthy exaltation. The poison inflicted on Makeda during her tussle with the assassins, though, was the same that was given to her father, which killed him in less than a day. But for all the agony it wrought on her body, the toxin was something she would eventually be grateful for in later years, as the heady, half-conscious experience granted her enlightenment, as many considered it. 
Through her own understanding of the scorn ways, her devotion to the Hoxine, her innate mortithurgy, awareness of her very self and her indomitable will, Makeda purged the poison from her body after ten arduous and excruciating days, receiving aid from none, not even any Chirurgan, for they could not help not knowing how. Upon reawakening, and upon learning that many true and loyal scorn had come to witness her ordeal and marvel at her recovery, Makeda found her battered cohort transformed into a full army of rebellion. From this, few were doubtful that war would be coming to House Balash once more, and the true heir to Varktash and Telkesh was going to claim what was rightfully hers. It is at this time that she started to form her inner circle, those that would be her foremost commanders in the future, when scorn armies would march across the Bloodstone Desert. Among those who followed Makeda to war against her brother was Xerxes of House Kofar, who would one day be her most redoubtable of subordinates. Some believe that it was also at this time that a then young tormentor Morgul also came to be an ally of Makeda's. Knowing that she needed to do all she could to, to defeat her brother, but aware that doing so might destroy her house with enemies waiting for the first sign of weakness, Makeda combined the teachings of her swordmaster with faith in the Hoxne and infiltrated the main compound where her brother cowered, close to the shores of Mirkath Lake, north of Halak. Nearby, Xerxes and her other allies engaged Akkad's forces in battle. Once inside, Makeda confronted her brother and his conspirators and struck him down in single combat. Akkad was famous for his skill in a duel and considered the better competence of the two siblings, but his flagrant disregard for the Hoxine and betrayal of his ancestors granted victory to his sister. For his dishonour, Akkad was rendered an aberration in the line of House Balash, unforeseen and undeserving. Thus did archivists duly strike his name from the house's histories at Makeda's order, and his soul denied an extoller's care, cast into the void as a result, forever to be known among the living as the nameless son, if he was spoken of at all. In the aftermath, word was spread that Makeda now ruled as archdomina of House Balash and its mighty Sabaoth, while her loyal tormentors enacted her judgments against the card's lackeys who conspired against her and her father, for from that moment on the nameless son could claim no worthy ancestry. To her regret and bitter disappointment, these fellow conspirators included many whom Makeda thought to be loyal servants of her father. Such a meteoric rise from second-born to Archdomina in but a matter of a few days would be overwhelming to many. But Makeda never forgot her place or her responsibilities as head of House Balash to its thousands of warriors, mortithurgies, workers and slaves, and in many regards to the whole Scorn race. This would stand her in good stead throughout the persistent conflicts among the Scorn houses, including up to and beyond the coming of one treacherous human from the West, he they dubbed the Conqueror, and when the Scorn Realms would become an empire.